my channel. That's not the hand that I do that with. What up my channel? Welcome back to another video. I'm Jesse, and you're watching. Today's video is going to be a discussion that a lot of us are not prepared to have. But I think these discussions are good. I think that it is good to push the boundaries of our own community, to challenge and question our own community, because that is how we grow. This video is not about calling out, but it is about calling in. It is a way for us to all examine the parts of ourselves that might be difficult to look at and the flaws in our own social politics and the people that we are leaving behind in our own communities. Now, this video, I'm going to be talking about a topic that is a little bit controversial, even though it should be. The topic is about the demonization of closeted characters in queer literature, specifically in queer romance. There is this beautiful wealth of queer literature that has been bursting from the shelves like never before queer narratives are being released in extreme volumes and we simply love to see it. Make no mistake, queer literature has always existed, whether it has been passed secretly in pamphlets under the table and then burned after reading, whether it has been circulated in secret newspapers and magazines, whether it has been kept beneath floorboards under one's bed, whether it has been written in code, Queer literature has always existed, and I want to make that perfectly clear. There is nothing novel or new about queerness. So say it with me, kids. There is nothing novel or new about queerness. What is novel is the fact that we have so much attention, so much forward focus on queerness in a way that we've simply never had before. There are so many coming out narratives and people coming out. A recent survey found that there are more than 1 million non-binary adults living in the United States of America. And that is a simply beautiful thing. But mind you, it is impossible to get actual statistics on non-binary individuals because a lot of us are not out because a lot of researchers aren't looking to study trans identities. And this is just talking about the United States. This isn't talking about non-binary individuals across the world and also not all gender non-conforming, gender defiant individuals use the term non-binary. That is a largely Western term. There are different names for gender defiance in different communities across the world. But what I'm trying to say is that whether we are talking about United States of America, Canada, the West, no matter where we are in the world, there is a more forward focus on queerness. Now, that focus, of course, depends on where you are in the world, what city you are in, because there, of course, like in the United States, for example, there are some cities where it is more comfortable for people to talk about queerness than others, right? Okay, so why am I talking about this? I'm trying to establish to y'all that we're in a beautiful period in history. We are making history where our books, our narratives, our TV shows, our movies, our music are more forward than they have ever been. You have musicians who have come out as non-binary. Demi Lovato recently came out as non-binary. Okay. We are here, we are queer, we are trans, and we always have been. How freaking cool. It is so exciting. But there's a problem. There is a problem. And I have noticed this is several of these new, fun, exciting narratives that are coming out. Yay, we love to see it. And I've also noticed this in our throwback narratives, our queer classic narratives, such as Tipping the Velvet by Sarah Waters, which is like the queer sapphic Bible right? If you haven't read this book, you should. You really, really should. And I also recommend getting the like the modern editions of this book after 2018 because post 2018, the author included an afterword in which she talks about the problems with the literature that she wrote. This came out in 1998. The manuscript was written in 1995. And she is very accountable now for some of the issues that she has seen in her book now that, you know, 30 years has passed. And largely in part, this book has sparked this conversation. I actually just filmed a dedicated reading vlog and review of this book. I feel like we have established the point that I'm trying to make. Now, let us talk about the problem. There has been a problem with modern classic queer literature and with the 2000s queer literature where closeted characters 
are always the villains of the story. Closeted characters are never the heroes. They are constantly pressured by their friends and romantic partners to exit the closet where they will then become a butterfly and everything is going to work out for them in the end. You see this theme in so many books. Mao, I'm gonna name a bunch of books in which this theme appears to some extent. But mind you, these books are not monolithic and the and I'm not saying that all of these books deal with this issue in a problematic way. I am merely saying that the books that I'm about to name or show on the screen, whatever, do have this trope that I'm talking about. We're talking about the love and lies of Roxana Ali. We are talking about the, we are talking about the passing playbook. We are talking about Black Water Sister. These books where one partner is out of the closet and is, is happy to be out and doesn't want to be put back in the closet by having a closeted partner, right? And then you have the closeted partner who usually has a very conservative family who they depend on for access to resources and safety. And the narrative of these books, the way that these books tend to unfold trajectory wise is that inevitably, whether it is the protagonist or the love interest, they get bullied and pressured and told by their friends and sometimes certain family members and told that everything will work out if they just come out of the closet. Their partners say, okay, well, you're keeping me in the closet and this isn't good for me. It's not healthy for me. And the emphasis of the book is then shifted to what's good for the other person. And the problem with that is we are not looking at what is good and healthy and safe for the opposite person. Now, here's another disclaimer. Before y'all fix to put words in my mouth, I am not saying that having a closeted partner isn't difficult for the person who is out. It has likely taken that person a great deal of self-work to be able to come out. And as somebody who is queer, I... I know how hard it can be to be pushed back in the closet or to feel like you're being pushed back in the closet. So I'm not saying that being closeted for a partner is not hard on the, the person who's then made to go back in the closet. I'm not saying that at all. What I am saying is that these narratives tend, and other books, uh, you see this somewhat, I think, in... Um, the problem with this is that these narratives tend to depict the partner who wants, who isn't ready to come out as being not brave or not courageous. And I want to correct that notion wholeheartedly. Doing what feels safe and right for you is the bravest thing that you can do. And it also, I think, is pretty ignorant to the realities of a lot of non-Western individuals and to BIPOC individuals, especially transgender individuals, who are the most likely to be kicked out of their homes when they come out, who are the most likely to be forced into things like sex work or to die on the streets. I just read Blackwater Sister and I loved that book, but there was this part where the main character's girlfriend who is out is like, you're in a prison of your own making by not coming out to your parents. And I was like, how dare you? How freaking dare you say that this this young woman who is terrified of coming out to her parents, who she believes from a lifetime of living with these people, are not going to be comfortable with it. Her dad has cancer and is trying to recover and she is deeply afraid that the stress of her coming out is going to negatively impact his health. And while yes, of course, like a lot of us Westerners are gonna be like, well, what about your health, right? We're not looking at the role of family as being central to one sense of self in Chinese culture, for example. And I think that this applies especially to like black and latinx cultures where we are forced or encouraged or pressured by white folk to come out because it's about us and like what is best for us but a lot of times those people don't think about the ways that our family are deeply deeply connected to our self sense of self and to lose especially our ancestral connections our spiritual connections um and our brujeria that is connected to our families for many of us and so we're losing all of that as well. And some of us are just simply not ready to give that up. Some of us are content to have mixed feelings about these things, if that makes sense, right? I personally did not think that that theme was handled very well in Blackwater Sister at all. Personally didn't feel that there was accountability for her girlfriend saying the thing that she said. And so essentially these narratives, one of the things that drives me wild about them is 
the one character, the character who wants to stay closeted or who isn't prepared to come out of the closet says, okay, well, I don't want to be homeless and I don't want to lose my family. And then their friends are like, it'll just work out. And I'm like, okay, but the kids reading these, I'm thinking about the kids and the adults who are reading these books who know damn well that their, that their family is not going to accept them and also that they might be brutalized by their family. And so the theme of these books is essentially these characters inevitably are forced to come out. Half the time things are just wonderful and they found they didn't have that much to worry about after all. But the other half of the time something bad happens and then their found family and friends like swoop, swoop in to rescue them, which is accurate for a lot of us. And I don't think that there's anything wrong with that. I'm just deeply uncomfortable with this trope and I'm really tired of seeing it. I think that it is harmful and toxic and I just wish that it was handled better. I want to see a character, okay, this this is an unpopular opinion, but I want to see a character who says, no, this is where I need to be right now. I'm not ready to come out and my girlfriend, my partner, my they friend, my boyfriend, my straight friends, my Western friends, none of y'all are going to pressure me into doing something I'm not ready to do. And I, like I said, I think that's brave. And I just want queer kids who are watching this or even queer adults who are closeted to know that what you are doing is brave. Simply the act of living as a queer and or trans body in this world is an act of bravery. Whether you are out or not, being out does not make you more brave than being closeted. I am so sick of this idea. This shouldn't be a controversial thing. And I think a lot of people, those of us who are out, kind of feel like I had to do so much work to come out and consistently stay out. Yeah, that's true. But this person is also doing a lot of work, too. And one person's work is not more valid than the other. It's just not. It's just not. I don't know if any of this makes sense. But I just, I'm tired of seeing this trope. <laughs> I think it's old. You see it in classic literature and, and we're still seeing it 30, 40, 60 years later, which is why I decided to make this video on it because I'm just not seeing that get better at all. Sometimes I see this trope handled really well. Sometimes I see it resolved in a way that is complex and empathic and deals with like all sides. But more often than not, like 90% or more, I see it done in such a problematic way I think that this was done horribly in the passing playbook. I loved that book, was ready to give it five out of five stars, but the way that one character, one character is coming out and dealing with that, the, just the whole way that it happened, I was deeply uncomfortable with and felt it was harmful. Now, I'm sure that there are queer and trans folk who feel oppositely, and that's great because we're allowed to have differing opinions. That's what makes us so great as a community is that my word is not the law, right? My opinion is just that. It's an opinion. It is a perspective. Even rightness and wrongness as concepts are arbitrary. They depend on what culture we're in, what lens we're looking through, and our own personal value systems, which of course differs people to people. So that is something that I want to make clear in this video too. I am so down to have a nuanced conversation about this and discussion because that's what this video is about. I would love to know some books that you think that this was handled well. And let's talk about some books where this was not handled well. Why is that important? Why is it important for us to talk about books where this didn't get handled well, especially if those books are by queer authors. Well, because it's important for those of us who are going into those books to be able to see the ways that they might be misrepresenting certain aspects of our community and peddling information or ideologies rather that is harmful. We as queer folk have a lot of things to work through. And even though I love this movement to be out and proud, I think that a lot of it a lot of that movement has come at the cost of people who are closeted. We are demonizing them. They're always the villains of the love story, right? They're always the ones who want, who aren't brave enough and their partner leaves them behind and they're painted in this negative light. They're painted as weak and selfish and lacking character or courage because they are not ready to come out. They're consistently painted as ashamed of who they are and as villainous as a result. Now, there are a lot of queer folks who, who do deal deeply with massive amounts of shame. So that representation is valid. My issue though is with these closeted characters continuously 
being depicted as self-hating or as just deeply character flawed. And so if you want a good example of what I'm talking about, you should read this book, especially the for the afterword. Yeah, I just think that while I'm so obviously so freaking excited about this out and proud movement, I want us to stop thinking that out and proud is the only way to be because it's not. And to peddle this idea that out and proud is the only way to be is problematic because it's not. So I guess what I'm trying to say is if you are closeted or if you were closeted sometimes in some situations and not others, if you were closeted with certain family members and friends or whatever, that is valid. Don't let anybody, nobody, nobody gets to tell you when to come out. Nobody gets to manipulate, pressure, gaslight, none of that. And I think that this is something that we need to talk about more moving forward in our relationships. And this includes our friendships because sometimes our friends pressure us, are the ones pressuring us too. I would like to see more in queer fiction these characters have upfront conversations about whether they're out and how they're going to deal with that, right? And of course, things change when you get in a relationship, of course. I want to stop seeing this trope of the closeted character is just dragging down the out character. And like I said before, I'm going to say it again, you are allowed as a out person to not want to date somebody who is closeted. There is nothing wrong with that. In my opinion, there's nothing wrong with that. If you don't want that for yourself, cool. But what you're not going to do is bully, gaslight, and manipulate and try and drag them from the closet. That's what you're not going to do. I just, I can't, I don't want to see it anymore. That That's the discussion. That's it. I would love to talk more. I would love for this to be an interactive discussion. And it's not about dragging these queer authors who write this trope. It's not about that at all. It is about analyzing trends in our own community, which is healthy and good, because that way authors can think about these things moving forward and address them in later books. Or new authors can see these criticisms and say, okay, this is not something that I want to, to put out into the world. Or, hey, this is something that I want to address in my book. You know what I'm saying? So again, this is not a call out but a call in. I'm a big fan of call ins. But yeah, that is going to do it for this video. If you want more content from me, follow me on my Instagram, which is Botez and Books, but all of my social media links will be in the description box below. Stay safe, and I hope to see you in my next video. Don't let anyone force you out of the closet.